Hey guys, it's Eric Connor again. Um, this is like a second video of my Battlefield 4 video. Uh, you guys already seen it. If not, it's in the description and you can check it out on my channel. Uh, Dispatch the Phantom Operator. That one I discuss more about what I liked about having the Phantom Project in Battlefield 4 and what it did to the gaming community as far as EA and Battlefield goes. And I kind of discussed other Battlefields like Battlefield 1 and then Battlefield 5, which I'm actually going to go more in depth to, is Battlefield 5 today. Um, I obviously mentioned the other battlefields in this video, but the focus is going to be Battlefield 5, as the title suggests. But uh, before I get started, I do want to mention that in the previous video, I mentioned that Battlefield 1 didn't seem to have something like the Phantom Project, and it kind of disappointed me because I was hoping Dice and EA would continue that in the Battlefield series. <coughs> But I was actually wrong. They do have something like that. I don't think it has a title to it yet, like the Phantom Project did. I think it was a little bit before you actually started calling it about a Phantom Project, because uh, fans and gamers were still trying to figure out all the Easter eggs and codes and all that. Um, but there are secret rooms and challenges and Morse code and hidden things throughout maps to unlock things like dog tags and skins and um, I think there's a jack I, I noticed this because I was googling if Battlefield 1 had anything like the Phantom Project and it came across the Jack Frags video which ironically as soon as I watched for to help me complete the Phantom Bow challenges or I'm sorry the Phantom Project and so he's doing another how-to video and I'll include that in the description below um, if you guys are interested in getting those dog tags in Battlefield 1 and some of those skins and like I said I think there is a weapon um, so but yeah enough about that I'm gonna move on to uh, I got one more thing to say before I start discussing my feelings about Battlefield 5 and people's reactions to it um, I in the last video I kinda made fun of those who are upset about the historical inaccuracies of Battlefield 5 and I'm not going to apologize for what I say but I'm going to say I have become more aware of why they're upset and realize it's not so much about the historical inaccuracies of the game it's more so about how EA and DICE is responding to the complaints and concerns and how the fans are retreating that is causing these guys to boycott Battlefield 5 to the point of even having a Twitter campaign of not my Battlefield <coughs> Um, that that aspect of why these people are why everybody's enraged about Battlefield 5 I won't say everybody but uh, quite a few of them I understand and have respect and support because <coughs> in a way I'm actually kind of getting upset myself about how EA is handling this and uh, the people around the community around EA, EA who's backing them is handling this as well um, one thing I will say like I'm willing to discuss any and all these topics with anybody at any point during my streams or uh, in the comments of my videos or on my Facebook and Twitter pages as long as they civil they are civilized and respectful EA and DICE and some of these people that are writing these video game articles are completely alienating this demographic of Battlefield 5 supporters or Battlefield supporters so I, I, I gotta correct myself because uh, these people that are making these complaints are not supporting the Battlefield so 5, hence why they're boycotting it. Um, he didn't even stop me. And if, the, if people came at me with, during these discussions, the way these article writers and uh, heads of EA and DICE are coming at the people complaining about their game, I would just shut them down and not listen to them. If you want me to be more sympathetic to your cause, like being progressive towards women's rights and equal being equally treated and eliminating things like sexism and racism which uh, you you wouldn't really have to try to convince me of that I am all for that kind of thing get rid of it I don't support racism or sexism by any means but I'm saying if you want me to listen to your side of the view maybe explain to me why you think it's ridiculous people are getting so upset about Battlefield 5 then don't come at me and say the moment I disagree with you that I'm sexist or homophobic or racist or whatever other new or they're not new terms but whatever 
new defense mechanism that people are having these days for issues like this is just to instantly try to make you feel guilty and like you're a horrible human being for disagreeing with them and that you're lumped in with the same group that would have hatred towards women and towards African Americans and towards homosexuals and that that's not fair at all just because I disagree with you doesn't mean I am this horrible human being that spits on all human existence if they're not like me uh, that's that you're being just as closed-minded as the racists out there if you ask me and you're being just as intolerant and if you want people to get on your side of the fence you need to I'm not saying understand and agree oh, on, with uh, these people have to say but at least be more civilized if, if you're gonna be nasty and negative they all you can do is feel their hate and make them more against of what you got to say so I'm, I'll stop, get off my soapbox there. But if you want to discuss any of these things I'm about to mention in this video, by all means do it. But like I said, the moment you resort to those same tactics that is being used attacking the fans of Battlefield right now, um, then you can you can might as well just move on because I'm, I'm not going to entertain it and I won't even respond to you. I, I'm not going to start blocking you, banning you, unless you're utterly harassing people and being nasty about it. Then yeah, I still ban you from my channel and stuff. But, um, I'm just going to ignore what you have to say and move on to somebody who wants to be more civilized in the discussion. And I, and I didn't know a lot of people's defenses because, he, oh, he banned me or he's ignoring me because I disagree with him. No, I'm banning and ignoring you because how you're treating and acting towards everybody else. But anyway, enough about that. Um, when I first saw the Battlefield 5 trailer... I will admit, when I saw the woman with a prosthetic arm, I was confused and a little bit concerned. I wasn't overly concerned because I was more excited. I, I am, for now, still pretty excited about Battlefield 5 because it looks like they are going back to the roots as far as gameplay and mechanics of Battlefield 5 in itself. Uh, back to the first Battlefield, 1941 and 1942. It, and that's what I've been longing for since Battlefield got reignited with modern combat and Battlefield 2 and all this stuff. Because um, I, I feel EA and DICE have kind of strayed away trying to compete with Call of Duty and be more appealing to Call of Duty fans. Which there's nothing wrong with Call of Duty fans, but there's also nothing wrong with them not liking Battlefield because they prefer Call of Duty. I like Call of Duty up until recently. Um and had no issues with it at all. And but call, when I play Call of Duty, I wanted to play Call of Duty. When I wanted to play Battlefield, I wanted to play Battlefield. And I think EA and DICE lost sight of that by adding things like TDM and Squad Deathmatch into the newer Battlefields. Um, if you guys want to just go around and kill people, go play Call of Duty. That's, that's the way I view it. And I want EA to go back that way with Battlefield 5 where they're gonna have just objective-based Multiplayers, and it's not going to be all about who can get the most kills. And from what I understand, you sounds like you're going to be more reliant on your squad instead of hiding up, up off in the hills, leeching off your squad's squad boost to snipe to make sure your KD stays positive and it becomes on the leaderboard. I, I'm more impressed by those who have a high KD, high squad score, high uh, objective nope. score oh, right on the leaderboards than I am about somebody has like let's say. 300 kills and 25 deaths. Woohoo, congratulations. You do absolutely nothing for your team. Like I said, I, there's nothing wrong with wanting to do team deathmatch style video games, but that's more about Call of Duty than it is about Battlefield. I want my Battlefield to be Battlefield and Call of Duty to be Call of Duty. They don't need to intermingle, and I kind of get frustrated when people try to compare Battlefield to Call of Duty, because they're not the same. To tell me they're the same shows me how ignorant you are, because, the, uh, yeah, the only thing similar about them, you carry guns, you get unlocks and attachments, and from what you see, Battlefield 5 kind of has a perk system, but it's more a squad-based perk system than an individual perk system. Um, and, our, well, I mean kill streaks, I should say. But that's it. That's the only similarities. Battlefield is supposed to be more objective-based, and Call of Duty is supposed to be... Uh, more about killing. So, when I'm discussing what we're discussing in this video today, 
I am just discussing Battlefield. I, Call of Duty means nothing to me right now. Um, and the Battlefield 5, I'm hoping, like I said, they're going more towards the objective base. Um, which, that's why, when I saw the trailer, I was more thinking, oh, this is... After I kind of looked at it more and more, I was like, okay, this this game is going to be kind of probably like a Battlefield Bad Company, but it's set in World War II. It's not really meant to be accurate, it's just meant to be a fun game that follows a bunch of characters that clearly didn't exist during World War II. Um, if they did, they weren't doing what they're doing in this game, that's for sure. And they're just a ragtag group, because everybody's complaining about a African-American black guy and a... And, I understand African American and black guy are the same people, but um, and a British unit with a woman with a prosthetic arm. And if that was meant to be historically accurate, then yes, I could see people's complaints. But like I said, I just took that's the way I took it as. And there's a lot of World War II movies out. I was brought up on World War II movies, and some even recently where. Um, they're based in World War II, but not are not historically accurate. I mean, the events around it is accurate, but what actually happened is not. Like, um, for the old school movies, uh, some of my favorites were the Dirty Dozen trilogy and Kelly's Heroes and stuff like that. I mean, they the events that the movie was based on were historical, but what actually the, the people you were watching, the units that were involved, they weren't they, they were not meant to be based on a true story. They were meant to be just a movie about World War II that's supposed to be entertaining. And that's what I took Battlefield 5 as when I saw the woman with a prosthetic arm. I didn't even even get confused about the black guy in a British unit because I, as I watch that trailer more and more it looks like it's ba it, the trailer is supposed to be of a multiplayer match because if you watch the woman actually dies in the big, when they break into the house and the next thing you know she's outside on the ground when the British guy jumps through the window at, next to the church hill so, I, so that's what, another way I looked at it that's why I'm not getting as enraged about the woman in Battlefield 5 as other people are now, I'm not saying they're wrong or horrible people for doing it, which is going to lead on to my next point about Battlefield 5 and EA and DICE and the community around them that's supporting their decision. What it is making me very angry and upset and frustrated is how they are treating the, the their customers, the consumers, and the people who've been fans of Battlefield since the Battlefield began. They're, they're all about attacking him and belittling him and berating him and making him feel like they're horrible human beings for feeling the way they feel about history and saying they're uneducated and all that and calling racists and misogynists and sexists and, and that's not right then that's what's leading me if I end up deciding not getting Battlefield 5 that would be my reason um, I know some people argue there were women in Battlefield or in World War 2 but these women were in supportive roles they weren't really in a combat role except for like with the exception of Russia and Poland and the French um, that that's about the issue with it nothing too serious nothing major as far as I'm concerned so then that's people are attacking everybody about that for that reason and it's ridiculous I mean uh, and the fact that they're ignoring what the fans are actually calling for is also a downside. Is like EA is more focused on pushing the political agenda and making money than they are actually about what the fan base is. And there's nothing wrong with using your product to post your beliefs and feelings about an issue, but it is another thing if you're shoving it down their throat, and it bothers me. The people shouldn't be doing things like that. That's not what video gaming or entertainment is all about. So. Like I said, it video games that should be uh, entertainment in general should just be that entertainment. Uh, again, I'm not saying they should lose their right to push their right, so. beliefs and agendas, but uh, everybody has the right to freedom of speech, freedom of expression, expression, and using any tool they feel necessary for well, that. To... But I have to get the, to there is a line, as far as I'm concerned. Maybe you guys disagree with me that there is a point where trying to get your point across you and your beliefs you across to support and show why you support them and even show support like in, in the sense of Battlefield 5 EA is using that as apparently a soapbox to 
push gender, gender equality, which again is nothing wrong with gender equality, but now they're starting to go from just using it as a platform to promote it to alienating their fan base. So that that's the issue I have. The, the, like That's the line they crossed. They went from just trying to promote their agenda to bashing, shoving it down your throat, and if you refuse to swallow, bashing you over the head with it. And that's just wrong. Especially since they're ignoring the actual complaints that everybody's having. They're they're just here, oh, you don't like women? Okay, and then that's where they're going, and that's wrong. But, um, actually, I'm trying to keep this video under 15 minutes. I'm a little over right now, so I'm going to make this a two-part series. So stay tuned for the second part of this video. I should post them about the same week, hopefully. It will depend how long it takes to do the final editing of this. So, um, actually, the beginning of the next video is what you're seeing right here. You'll be my Operation Locker footage. Um, you come check it out. See see how well I did here. As you can see in the end of the last video, I'm getting a little better or er, better and better with the bow. I mean, yeah, I use the pistol a lot, but hey, you do close quarters combat with the Phantom Bow. Tell me how you do. And actually, go ahead and post in the comments your stats if you use the Phantom Bow and how often you do it. But better have proof to back it up. So, anyway. Um, yeah, so if you like this video, go ahead and click subscribe down below, uh, give it a thumbs up, and if you want to see more, I will be posting a part two. Uh, I, uh, my thoughts have gone a little longer than I planned them to, but that, you can't really just kind of rush things like this. So instead of making this an overly long video, I'm just going to leave it at this. So uh, stay tuned for the next video. Until then, I'll see you guys around. Uh, check me out on my other pages in the description below. So I hope you guys are having a good day, and I'll talk to you guys later.